You text me right now and I'm sitting right next to you. <laughs> it's now time for Ermani and Edwards with Maz, live on the Woodward Sports Network. Every day, 2 to 4 p.m. Starring Ryan Ermani, Michigan great and former NFL baller Braylon Edwards, and of course, Tom Mazaway. Let's talk some sports. Oh, okay. Uh, Ermani and Edwards with Maz. Maz nor Ryan will be in the day, but that's okay. We got my main man, Terry Foster. Always fun to have you. And you got the tie on today with the hat. I like the look, man. It's got the old school, maybe like the 60s reporter look, man. Like you look at a flat foot. I want to bring the 60s reporter. Okay. I like it. Also joining us, Philly for Maz today, my man Anson Wells down there. What's up, Anson? How you doing, man? I'm feeling great today. Sun's out, guns out. Let's go. This is true, man. We got a new guy in the booth, man. He's fully on the job now. Mike, man, what's up, brother? How you feeling? I, I can't complain. I'm doing good. And then you know who runs the show, Peace Pivot. How you doing, brother? Doing all right, my friends. Hope you guys had a great weekend. It was a good weekend, actually. Yeah. How was your weekend? What it, did you get into? It was all right, man. I just really didn't get into nothing. I was kind okay. of feeling under the weather. Just stayed home, did the, the, uh, did the laundry, man. But I'm very impressed by the look of Terry Foster today. T. Foster, how was your weekend? <laughs> Seems like you had a good weekend. You look good, man. Sometimes it's not a bad thing when you're expecting to do something and then it gets canceled and you get a little more free time to yourself. It's not always a bad thing. Next weekend, next oh, next weekend is graduation weekend? No, St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's what, Sunday? I think I'm going to have to stay away from that, man, because I'm not coming to Monday if I participate on Sunday. Answering <laughs> you, how was your weekend, my guy? My, my weekend was, uh, was real good. It was busy. It was productive. Got a chance to spend a little time with my man Stick over there. Stick, so. Sam Day in That's the right. building. A lot of movement in the NFL. We'll get to a lot of the deals, the free agent deals that are happening. My weekend was good. Um, what did I do? I feel, like, I feel like it went quick, though. I feel like the weekend was very fast. We hung out a little bit. Uh, it was. Friday, we didn't do very much. Saturday is my girl's grandfather's 93rd birthday. Wow. And he had a lot of his siblings are still alive. So, 91. His oldest sister is 95. God bless she, him. Man, I'm telling you, man. It was it was fun. It was, you get some wisdom from those guys. That was fun. Yeah. People ask you on Monday, how was your weekend? And I have to stop and say, what, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? That's how, I, especially when they blur by like this one. I think the party kind of took up the weekend. I think we saw Kung Fu Panda yesterday, and I watched the Oscars. Anybody here Oscar fan? Oh, I guess I glazed over Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda fans? I'm a Kung Fu Panda fan. I haven't seen number four yet. Okay. Yeah, it just came out. It was, well, you know how it is. Once you get past two, three, it's lackluster. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> no, no, no. Four wasn't good. I thought it was... Yeah, I don't want to bash the movie, but I thought it was a little lazy done. You just kind of put something together. But that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Shrek, all four Shreks were amazing. All four Shreks were good. So I think it just depends. DreamWorks usually gets it right, but they dropped the ball on this one. Uh, Oscars last night, Oppenheimer wins. Picture of the year, I had a chance to see that. Uh, excited about that, but more excited, Robert Downey Jr. finally wins an Oscar. He got Best Supporting Actor in Oppenheimer. Great journey he's been on. Like when you really get the backstory and find out that his father had him drinking and doing drugs at 12, that was how they connected. And you know, you remember his earlier career and path to Betty Ford. And even when he did uh, Iron Man the first time, Terrence Howard, who was the original Rose, got paid more than Robert Downey really? Jr. He got, I think, Terrence Howard was paid $2.2 million for it. Robert Downey Jr. got like 875000 but he parlayed all his money into the merch and okay. the licensing agreement, Smart. which in the long run was a much smarter play because Iron Man and Avengers have taken over. But just good so to see. So he got paid more. He got <clears throat> broke the hell off in the long run. Right. Yeah, but uh, good for him. Barbie was huge. Did you, Barbie guy, did you see I have see not the movie? seen that one yet. I, I will check it out. I have not seen Barbie, though. I saw the movie. It was... It was interesting. I think Will Ferrell like stole the show. Oh, really? Like, I didn't Will, even know like, he was Will in Ferrell it. Will Ferrell was he plays like the uh, he basically plays like the CEO of the company that's kind of like hiding Barbie's creator in a closet somewhere and making all the money off of it. So they really played to, you know, the Mugatu. time. Mugatu. He was Mugatu again. Mugatu again. One hundred percent. Dynamite drop in by you. Zoolander. If I'm oh, not mistaken, man. great movie. Blue Twisted Steel. That, that, that was Hansel so hot right now. It, it, 
The what? That Hansel's so hot right now. Oh, very true. <laughs> <laughs> the Barbie's not even. Now you got me want to watch that movie. I just, you know, I can't imagine that I'm gonna like a Barbie movie. You know how it is. I saw it with the family. Uh, it's one of those things where it, you look for the good spots. Like when you know you're going to see something you may not necessarily want to see, you just find some spots and there's some good humor. So it was good. Right. You a big movie guy at all? Um, I'm getting more into it in my basement. Okay. Because I got the uh, the sound bar and my big thing and I got my theater chair. So I'm, I'm starting to watch more. Actually, I'm yeah. watching series more. Um, I think everybody instance, is now. Yeah, I know. I... Like a five years ago, I tried to watch The Wire, didn't like it, and now. So then I'm like, dang, everybody else likes it. So let's start it again. So I started again. I'm like, I got all in it. Watched the whole five seasons in like three weeks. It's those first five, Stringer six Bell. episodes in season one that are hard to get through, yeah. and then it's a major, major payoff. But yeah, I but, watched the movie this last time. I got through the first five, six episodes like that. Yeah, yeah. Watching by they yourself. They dropped so many names mm-hmm. early on, and it's based on technology that's 25 30 years old so once you can get kind of past that the writing in, in the wire is fantastic but i saw a movie last night okay that Me you too. guys have to see it's got mr john cena in it and it is ricky stanicky i just i just watched it it's amazing Yo, it's- i laughed the whole movie it's so funny you said that. So, obviously, well, not obviously. John Cena presented the award last night naked. You know, John does anything. Oh, he did, really? He did. And, like, he He's came up. phenomenal. He literally only had the envelope. They had, like, a bigger envelope. He was out there, and he did it. I, I was like, hats off to him. I couldn't have been me. But I saw it today, and I'm like, John's a funny dude. This is a way to kill an hour and 45 before I come Lost to work. today. I watched it literally before I got it. The movie is hilarious. Zach Efron, like, the movie's great. Cena is... He's magic in that movie. I mean, he is. I, I didn't realize this guy. I knew he could act pretty good because I've seen him in some, some flicks where he has kind of a, a smaller role. Yeah. But he's the main guy, and he is unbelievable. He's so yeah. funny in that movie. The movie you know, your better actors are in the WWE now. So that's True. what I was going to say. The Rock pretty much charted the, the Rock, blueprint for these True. guys. Cena. And Cena's Batista. right behind him. Batista was right after him. They've all followed I, The Rock. I think and the done next one thing. that's going to make that big leap is Roman Reigns. Yeah. Ro- the only thing is, like, it, Roman's personality, I didn't think he would be able to do it at first. Very dry. He didn't have that personality. But now he's gotten better since he's been this mm-hmm. head of the table for the past four years. You're actually right. I think he's going to do it. I thought, I thought Randy Orton had a shot, but maybe not. But that movie, Ricky Stenicki, unbelievable is... It's so funny. I mean, you're laughing out loud yeah. from start to finish. You're not lying. Like, it gets into it quick. They get to Atlantic <laughs> City. I don't want to ruin the movie, but basically, it's a guy. He's done nothing with his life. He's like a lounge singer, but his form of lounge singing is kind of singing these uh, explicit songs or remaking them in like uh, like Billy Idol song or making these songs and making them about <laughs> sex. And they hire him to play a friend that they created years ago and have been putting things off on. Now they really need him in a pension. I won't say any more, but it's the movie was fantabulous. Good. It's you so funny. See I it. legitimately just watched it. I love it. I just watched it last night, and it's, it's so good. You guys got to check it out. Yeah, uh, it definitely is so good. You got to check it out. Um, a lot of movement in the NFL today. I think that's what we're here Big to do. We're here movement. to talk about football. We're here to talk about the Lions and how it affects them. A lot of movement. And in within the division, too. You're seeing some movies made. Chicago Bears, or moves, I should say. Chicago Bears looking to get better. DeAndre Swift, they signed him three years. $24 million. I think that's a uh, major move for them. How about DeAndre Swift? Like It looked like his career was going to be over after Detroit. Could never stay on the field. Could never stay healthy. He goes to the Eagles. Had a pretty good year, especially the first six, seven games of the season. And now here you are a year removed from that, two years removed from the Lions. He signs a three-year deal worth $24 million. That's Maz's guy. Maz never wanted to let him go. And here he is with the with Chicago Bears back in the division. Seems like so and Maz's also go crazy. Wait. They signed Kevin Byer. Yeah. Safety from Tennessee Titans, also from the Eagles. So it looks like they got a package That's deal there. That's a great there. pickup. They're I trying to it's, make moves. It's I think it's more important than than Swift. I love Swift as a player. Yeah. Hats off to him, but I'll tell you what what we saw on Hard Knocks, I think everybody in Detroit was ready for him to go. Yeah. I think we're happy with what we ended up with. Philly, I'm sure, was happy with what they got. Um, I like the running backs. I, I'm a Rashawn Johnson believer. I think he's a solid player there. They're pretty deep now, but it all comes back. I mean, who's going to be under center there? 
Yeah. That's what it all comes down to. Yeah. I, I think the thing that, that we learn and maybe don't quite understand, it's not just about talent in the in National Football League. It's about talent and fit and belief. I mean, like Swift, the line, he was never going to work out here because the coaches never believed in him. Yep. And for whatever reason, the, the – uh, Eagles coaching staff believed him. I'm sure the Bears coaching staff will believe in him. So it's good he's not here. Even if he burns the Lions yeah. for 150, 160 yards, he wasn't going to do it here. Yeah, I think the big thing, and you're absolutely correct, it's it, it's about what he did when he was here. I think the thing that was damning for me, it was on hard knocks, but it was the conversations that – Deuce McCallis, I mean, excuse me, Deuce Staley was having to have with DeAndre Swift. Here you got a guy played at Georgia. He's been in the NFL three years, and you're still having to tell this guy how to hit the holes, yeah. how not to dance around in the backfield, how not to take sacks, how not to run out of bounds. And you can see Deuce legitimately was like, Yo, are you all right? Like, like, bro, like, and I think you're absolutely right because when I saw that, I said, this guy doesn't, I don't want to call him soft. But it just seemed like an element of yeah. softness or an element that, he was through with Detroit, and sometimes you need that change of scenery. He's from Philly, so maybe going back home kind of woke him up and yeah, got him a deal. Good, uh, congrats to him. It seemed like they needed to mo- – beyond just teaching him the, the small nuances of being an NFL player, yeah. they needed to motivate him to be the RB1 on this team. And at the place that the Lions were at that point, we were, we were taking that next step, and we needed mindsets yeah. and, and, and egos that were ready to absolutely embrace their role on that team. And what we saw from a skill standpoint with Swift wasn't matching up with his emotional level of, of play and, mm. and his presence on the team. And I agree 100%. You know, uh, he's a part of that Quinn Trisha era. You know, and maybe yeah. those two years of contrition, maybe it kind of spoiled the game for him a little bit. And maybe even in the Honolulu Blue and Silver with a different coach in Dan Campbell, with a different owner in Sheila, maybe he just still felt he can shake what happened with the uh, regime. Sometimes you need a change in scenery. So good for him. Two people that are not getting a change in scenery, Craig Reynolds and Graham Glasgow. Netflix. Graham Glasgow signs a three-year deal worth $20 million. And Craig Reynolds comes back as what they love Craig Reynolds, they tough do. nose running back, and he shows up whether it's in the Carolina Panthers game or whether it was on fourth down in the playoffs. Craig Reynolds seems to be a guy that they can trust, they like, they bring him back. And Graham Glasgow plays all the positions online. Those are major moves, I think, for uh, a team that's trying to get back to where they were. Both of those guys absolutely embody what it means to be a brand new lion. Agreed. Agreed. I tell you, the thing that's going to scare me is when Jonah Jackson walks out. Because he, he wants too much money. They, I'm sure they don't want to pay it. Yeah. And they rushed the ball well last year. But when Jonah Jackson was in the lineup, it was almost one yard per carry difference when Jackson was in the lineup than when he wasn't there. So either he's just really, really great or the replacements were really, really poor. So I guess we'll find that. So that, that scares me a little bit. But I agree with him. I don't want to pay $16 million bucks a year for him. It might be the market. You see who just signed uh, 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 left guard. Just I can't think of the name right now, so please forgive me, but he just signed to a big contract, and I think that's going to start influencing the market for what Jordan Jackson does. I'll get that name for you guys in a second. But I like the Graham Glasgow move. Jonah Jackson's the guy that I want next. want him to focus on that because the line is a catalyst. Ryan Armani talks about this all the time. you got to make what you do even better. And right now, the staple for the Detroit Lions is our offensive line. And now you, you, you repaid Jonah Jackson. You paid Glam Glasgow. You still have uh, Decker and Frank Ragnar under contract. Panay Sewell will be coming up probably after next year. You got to make sure, in my mind, Anson, make sure that offensive line is good because when the offensive line is good, 16 is good. When 16 is good, Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery can be good as well. And they were arguably the best unit in the NFL last yeah. year. And that was, that was what pushed and, and took the Lions to the level that they got to. You often see these top-tier offensive linemen leave top-tier units and struggle. Yeah. And so as good as a certain player can be, it really is about the unit and the cohesion between those five guys, six, seven guys, a couple guys that can fill in. Um, Jonah's, Jonah's going to be a loss, but the guys that they're maintaining and they're keeping here, I think they're the staple of that, that mauling offensive line. Um, and I think that that's where we're going to go in the first round as well. Yeah, 100% talking I, about. I, I don't think they're going guard in the first round. 
You, offensive you know, line, no offense. So guard specifically. I'm not saying guard. I, I just think offensive lineman. Okay. And I don't think offensive line either because nope. Brad Holmes can get what he wants in the second, third, and fourth round, and the depth is so good. It and, is a big offensive lineman, line draft. I don't think he's going to do that. I, you know, I and I, I've been screaming for this for years and years and years, and the Lions don't do it. I think they'll find something or someone on the defensive side of the ball in the first round. That some of them can impact the game more than a guard can. You know, it's interesting you say that, and I think, you know, in years past, you know, we would all be nervous. You know, what is that going to be? What dumb move are they going to make? Are they going to take Gerard Davis instead of taking Dalvin Cook? And the list goes on with moves that they made. But I think because of Brad Holmes' track record over the past three years, I think you give them – you give him that credit. You give him that window to see what he's going to do at pick 29, whether he's going to move up, move back, or draft there. So I don't have a problem with that. I'm excited to see what it is. Who knows? I don't want an offensive lineman. But if he drafts one, I think his draft record so far has to have you like, all right, it may not be the move that I would have done, but let me see how it plays out because he has shown me through three drafts that he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and the other thing, here's the challenge for us as analysts or uh, people couch talk analysts. about this. Whatever we say, or whoever we say he should pick up, he doesn't do it. Yeah. He has never, we have never predicted the right person that he was going to get. Sure. Like, we didn't think he's going to get Aiden Hutchinson because we thought maybe he might go to number one. No one talked about getting, uh, uh, you know, running back Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs, yeah. And, then, and uh, then Campbell. In fact, the narrative was that's the last thing you should do is get a running back and then a linebacker. And he's like, these are the best players on the board. I believe in them. They're coming to Detroit. Yeah. So now you got to, you know, we, we can't figure this guy out. It's All a great I take. know is whatever he does, I'll be in favor of it. Yeah. It's a great take because Panay fell into that. And I think the one Jameson thing that Williams. we've always been, that's always happened to Lions fans is we've always wanted to go one way and it, they always went the other, and it never, ever worked out. And with this guy, it's been the same thing like Terry just said. Yeah, It's moves that, that came out of kind of nowhere, that went against what you thought they were going to do, but it's just worked every damn time, year after year with this guy. And now, you, like you said, Bray, you have to have faith. You have, in, in Brad, we trust. 100% in Brad, we trust. And so much so in Brad, we trust. And Dan Campbell, you see the odds on favor for the to win the NFC North this year came out again. It is once again Detroit Lions. Love it. Uh, and I want to say plus two fifty. You got that for me, Pete. So, uh, take your time. It's all good. The Lions favor, and they should be favored to win the North. You saw what they did last year. They did it with their guys. They did it with their draft, and they did it the, their way, running the ball down people's throats. Who could be? The team that you think could challenge that. Here you go right now, Pro Football Focus. Uh, plus 155, the Lions are to win the NFC North. Green Bay in second at plus 240. Chicago Bears at plus 360. And then the Minnesota Vikings in fourth at plus 450. Who is the team right now, Anson? And obviously you can start with the moves that are made today that you think is directly could challenge the Detroit Lions. Well, who's been the best team in our division for the last 40 years? Uh, that team from Green Bay. That's right. And... It Organizationally, that's the team that we've been chasing, regardless of the players that they put on the field and the outcome that happens there. That's a top-notch franchise. Yeah. Period. And um, you know they've been able to to create Hall of Fame quarterbacks and then replace them over and over again. Yeah. Um, and now they've got a kid in, in Jordan Love that looks like the real deal. I think what I love most about Green Bay and what I I think is a a problem for both the Bears and the Vikings, and, and I'm probably going to say this thing three or four times on, on the broadcast today, change is the ultimate indicator of failure in the NFL. Green Bay has never done a whole lot of it. Um, I think when you look at, at Minnesota, I think people are sleeping on Minnesota. I wouldn't be surprised to see Cousins come back on a one, two-year deal while yeah. they draft a young guy to, to develop underneath him. TJ McCarthy. And that's the best thing that, that can happen for Minnesota because that's still a good team if you put Cousins back in that offense. Yeah. Now, the Bears are exciting. Hey. There's a whole bunch of signings, some, some good young guys. Number but one pick What's overall. going to happen with Justin Fields? If you bring in and you draft a top guy, I am not a Caleb. Believer, all right. This is a guy that did not have a hundred point rating in one game this season, all right. Yeah. So I think they bring Justin Fields back. They use those chips to just absolutely 
just load up with studs in the draft. They've already started to do it in free agency. That's a team I'm most afraid of if they keep Justin Fields. But I think they're going to chase him out of town, which I'm, I would love to see. Yeah, it, if they it, don't chase Justin Fields out of town, I, the Bears, to me, are the most scary team because they're, they're just adding on pieces. They're like, just like in bleep it mode right now. Yeah, We're going for it now. We're going to bring in uh, high price free agents, even though, personally, I don't believe in them all the time. I think they flop out. But the Bears, are like, it's like, it's like they feel they have this small window, and they're going for it now. So I, I fear the Bears more if they keep Justin Fields. And I'm a guy, I'm in a minority problem, probably. If, all your life. If I were in charge, <laughs> hey, I'm used to it. Hey, hey, it's I, a black I joke, wanna, man. I don't want a Troy Weaver you now, so you be careful. <laughs> no, I want those I want those problems. I don't want those no, but problems. I, I, I might be in the minority of this, but I just believe Justin Fields, if he gets consistent coaching and if he can get a comfort zone, he's going to be a very dangerous dude in the National Football League. I would not trade him away. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to take Caleb Williams. I just think at this point with the Chicago Bears track record of quarterbacks, I just think they have to. I don't even think it's a thing. They may not even want to. I just think it's a situation they have to. I'm going to agree with both of you guys. I think it's Green Bay that is the number one problem for the Detroit Lions. You saw what they did last year. Last time I checked, Green Bay was this close to playing against us in the NFC Championship this year. That's and right. you saw what they did in the second half of the year, including embarrassing the Lions on Thanksgiving. That's the last time they right. played, and they beat up on Detroit. So I think it is Green Bay. I like what they're doing. Finally, it seems like Matt LaFleur has the team he wants. He has a quarterback he wants. I think he has a control that he wants on that team. He's doing a really good job. But I think the Bears are loading up. They're making moves, whether it's DeAndre Swift, whether it's Montez Sweat last year during the season, Kevin Byard, uh, all-pro safety. But I don't think they're going to win. I just think they're a team that can get in Detroit's way. Like, they can beat Detroit and make Detroit. Uh, and now Green Bay has the advantage. Green Bay has the edge. I just think they're a team in Detroit's way in that regard. But I think Green Bay, in terms of being a team, in terms of a team that I can see go on to do things, I think it's Green Bay's is the direct problem for the Detroit Lions. It could. But when you look at 120 minutes of football yeah. with them on the field, the Bears were better than the Lions last year. Yeah. When you look at the totality – of uh, just them playing in those games, other. yeah, right. Yeah, in those two games. Obviously, overall they weren't, but that's yeah. dangerous. Same with the Packers. We beat the ha- Packers for one half of football in it's, two games. This is true. Two and a half, two and a half, uh, two and a half qu- uh, uh, halves. They won. Now, I want to ask you both this. Yeah. And I'm leading the question, but what's the toughest division in, in the NFC right now? It's our division. It's I believe the, it so. Is, it is the NFC North. I just think from this standpoint, even if you just take two teams. Look at what Green Bay and Detroit did last year. They were argued top four teams yep. in the conference. So you look uh, in the conference. You look at it from that standpoint, and now you add the Bears. You saw how they transcended. They were five and two or five and three once they got Montez Sweat, or six and two, I believe, or five and three. Yes, very good. eight games. They were very good. That's not that. bad. No. Five and three, half game. I mean, a half season sample size. I definitely think it is. What other division is it? You don't know what Seattle is going to be this year. The Rams. They, you know, barely snuck into the playoffs. Obviously, the 49ers, they may be on a bit of a decline this year. Uh, NFC East is a joke to a certain extent. I definitely think it's the NFC North. I think they definitely have a, a, uh, a solid argument for it, T-Cross. Sure, but which goes to show that long-term, Brad Holmes cannot continue this. Let's do it slowly. You know, at some point, they've got to make splashes because the rest of the league, the rest of the division is saying, okay, we're not going to let the Lions run away with this division like Green Bay did for so, so long. Yeah. We're going to stay step for step with them. We're going to build teams that beat the Detroit Lions, that can beat the Detroit Lions. So it just shows Brand Holmes can't chill out. He's going to have to be on the edge the rest of the time he's here. Which leads me to my next point. I'll get you involved in this. I mean, let's open it up. You're seeing all the moves that are being made today. Today is big money day. Like, today are the moves that are being made. These guys are typically getting paid the huge deal. The Wilkins contract is built. Chris Jones is over $30 million a year. $30 million a year. These are the big moves. Do the Lions have to make one of these big moves in your estimation, Anson? Because, look, you don't know how long that window is. You saw three years ago, 313-1, and one, two years ago, 9-8. and eight. Last year, they were in the NFC Championship, seven minutes away from being in the yeah. Super Bowl. How long is that window? Do you got to make one of these big moves? Are young Brad Holmes asked today? I'm so glad that you asked this question because I believe that the Lions are going to be yet an, they're going to set yet another trend in the NFL. You look at Tom Brady and the New England Patriots, and how was it that they won? Was it on max contracts? Nope. 
No. In fact, the GOAT said, I'll take less so we can have more. And I, for two years, have been telling yeah. everybody, Ben Johnson's not going anywhere. I'm telling the same thing, and I think from what I've been hearing that it's going to happen. The big three are going to take a little bit less than what they could get on the open market. And I believe that everybody wanted to make that big splash in free agency. They wanted to see that this last year. But we had a lot of question marks still. Yeah. We answered and filled a lot of those holes. Now we have a much more defined a, a defined chase. We have a defined problem here, yeah. one couple there. And what we've proven is, is that we don't have to break the bank to sign a, a guy on a Detroit contract, which means they didn't want to come here. So we got to overpay Marvin Jones style. Which means their heart isn't in it already. Exactly. Yeah. And so what these guys are doing is, is I believe that Brad Holmes is building a, fo a football team in a new model. And I think that he's getting people to buy into this culture that him and Dan have created. And now we're really going to see if that's true, if the big three end up signing at a more comfortable rate so that we can go out and get more guys. I don't see this team ever breaking the bank on one player. Yeah, and by the big three, I think it would be Jared Goff, Alvin Ross St. Brown, and maybe Peneso. Absolutely. The third, 100%. They are the big three, and Aiden will be joining them the following year. So uh, I agree. I, it, it, it always comes back to Michigan for me. You know that. I think when you watch Detroit, it's like Michigan and Jim Harbaugh. Like, you didn't have to use the NIL as certain other schools, Ohio State or Oklahoma or USC. Michigan got guys just to buy into wearing the maize and blue, wearing yes. the black helmet. He restored kind of the team, the team, the team, and both Schimbeck's image. And I think that's what you see with the Lions. The Lions are building like, look, trust us. Trust how we built this yes. thing. Like, when this is something that Lloyd Carr told me and – it, you'll see it in all facets of life. You'll see it in all jobs. You'll see it in all careers. When the team wins, everybody wins. No doubt. And I think that's what the Lions were able to show nobody. When nobody was winning, they come in, they clean it up. Now in three years, you got two all pros. I mean, Amon Ross St. Brown is one of the best wide receivers lead. Panay Sewell is the highest graded right tackle uh, in the NFL last season. And now everybody's like, well, not only are we winning contract-wise because, oh, they're about to get paid. They also win the division. They also get to the NFC Championship and almost had a chance to represent. So I think their model is showing itself. All you want to see is, is when somebody tells you something, you want to see it. If someone tells you a thing and you see it, now you believe in that person. Now you believe in that thing. And I think that's what Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell, they now have all the team trusting them because they see it. And they also invaded eight different cities yeah with all those fans that this filled that true. stadium and so what we have now as lions fans is an opportunity to see free agents want to come here yeah want to come here and that that creates discounts but it also it doesn't create the apathy like you talked about when you get a guy that comes in here and you had to overpay him to get here he doesn't really want to be here i think guys want to take part and feel what it feels like to be on to be able to travel yeah. and take over a whole arena. Yeah, and 100% when well, I played that's for That's cute, but uh, <laughs> look, Jared Goff is not going to sign a $35 million a year contract. It's going to be $45 million or more. That's a discount. Huh? So 45 is a discount in this day and age. You pay, they pay 47 for that's Daniel Jones money. in New York. Still a lot of money. I thought I, I thought he would sign for 47 dollars what, what, what would be fair in your estimation right now? What would be fair for Jared Goff for a three-year Three year deal. Forty seven so, five per year. That's now been my thing. The only thing I ask, forty seven five. The last two seasons he's been in the top five in terms of ranking as a quarterback. And then this last season, he won two home playoff games and almost won another one. So like forty seven, I see people that don't even get to the playoffs that make forty seven. I think be a little bit more realistic. You sticking with forty seven? They'll probably sign for fifty. Yeah. I just don't think you can get him for less than fifty answer. And I, I don't think, think the you, Lions can. I think the Lions can, and that's the deal. Even if it's just $5 million a year discount, that goes towards another player. This is true. This is true. Look, let's take a quick break. Uh, I'm thinking about opening up the phone lines today because I'm interested to see what the city thinks about what Brown Holmes should do with that pick at 29. And are the Lions in any trouble this year with the division? Chicago making some strong moves, and Green Bay, you saw what they did last season. The number is 313-552-6322. Once again, 313-552-6322. Let's take a break. Pete, 
Yes, Tell sir. Tell me where to go. Uh, we're going to go to me first and then you second. How's that, my All friend? Right, you stand by for Planet Fitness. So, But first, let me let you know about Wake Up Woodward. Woodward Sports has a new morning show. Start your day with Wake Up Woodward Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. live right here on Woodward Sports. Join Kool-Aid, Flannel Sam, Broder, JB, and KG every morning as they cover all of Detroit sports talk. Banter and live fan interaction as well, all on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports, over to Bray. It is the home of the judgment free zone. How many people out there don't like going to the gym because you don't like to be judged? You don't want people watching you in your business, how you work out? Well, that's one thing you don't have to worry about at Planet Fitness. The second thing is only $10 a month. That's right. Only $10 a month it takes you to go to Planet Fitness, get that membership, come in there, and eventually feel good about yourself. It's March. You know what I mean? Spring is coming. Then that means summer's coming. You want to have that summer body, you got to only pay $10 a month. And it's clean. It is squeaky clean, as they like to say at Planet Fitness. So come on down, get that membership, because your fitness is essential. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Mike, Metro Detroiters come together for yet? two things. Tigers baseball and you the are? best okay. damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is yeah, yeah, here. Just, just We're bringing in the new the season as only like Woodward Sports zone. knows how. Broadcasting live no, from the it. biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Walk into any Lady Jane's haircuts for men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> And you can come into Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience. Register to win a trip of your dreams and all expenses paid sweet to the 2024 NCAA Tourney. It's coming up. It's right around the corner. And that's right. No expenses spared for you and five of your best buds. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. It is wicked awesome. Back to Bray, Terry, and Anson. Back to Imani and Edwards with Maz. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that our ball hitting patron over here, Pete, <laughs> talked about uh, the Final Four, uh, March Madness. It is coming up. It is here. But did you get a chance to see this past Saturday, it was senior, or Sunday, it was Senior Day, Anson. I know you'll get a kick out of this. It's Senior Day at Chrysler, U of M. I know the team's not good. They lost their 23rd game this year, which is the most in Michigan history. Yikes. But do you see this picture, ladies and gentlemen? This is senior day at one of the biggest institutions in the nation. In football, they're a blue blood. In basketball, they're pretty damn good. To see no one in the crowd, no one in attendance, what are your first thoughts when you see that answer? Hallelujah. I love it. Um, I knew you would get a kick out of it. That's, I mean, why, that's why I teed you up. 
I mean, I, this is a team not to cut you off. You're, this is a team that was in the national championship five years ago. Yep. They were at least in the Sweet 16 almost every season for the better part of eight years. And now to see this, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm shocked. It's, it's such a mighty school. And even down years, they're able to maintain their fan base. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are wrong right now with that basketball team. It starts on top. So they've got a lot of questions that they've got to answer there. I don't want to get too far into that. but I think he's that, actually staying another year, too. Yeah, that's crazy to me. I, I love Juwan, but it's crazy to me. Yeah. Um, you know, after you guys won a national championship in football, the yin and yang always happens, man. Something had to balance it out. And as a Spartan alum, I love it, you know, because yeah. we got basketball and you guys got football. True, true. But you know what? It, you know, why, what, why go? What's what's the reason to go? And maybe the fans, yeah, yeah. in mean, a way, are saying we don't believe in you wanting to bring Juwan Howard back. Lions you don't care enough about this program to fire your coach. Yeah. So why should we show up? That's a very good point. Kind of like the Lions in two thousand eight, uh, the Owen sixteen year, Matt Millen year. Here's another interesting thing, uh, Anson T. Foss, indulge mm. me on this. Michigan football doesn't have to use NIL. Like, yeah, they pay some players. I mean, you see Blake Corm has done some things. You saw Aiden, not Aiden, but uh, uh, Chris Jenkins last year did some things. But they don't do NIL like everybody else. And we just talked about it. It's Jim Harbaugh. They're coming for Jim. They're coming for the icon of a coach. They're coming to buy into the system. And also, Michigan doesn't necessarily go after all the five stars or the four stars. They have a lot of three stars that they bring in, too. They don't use NIL. It helps football because of Jim Harbaugh, or it did because of Jim Harbaugh. We have yet to see it by Sharon Moore. Does it hurt basketball? I mean, it Because you see it, Hunter Dickinson left, it, and this is a guy that was back-to-back Big Ten player of the year. It, I mean, it's not helping them, yeah. and they're in a position where they need all the help that they can get. It's, it's something they certainly need to utilize at this point because they are the kings in football in the Midwest, period. It's the Big M. You know, Everyone knows it. Whole, whole nation. Yeah, yeah, and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll admit to it. I'll give into that. Appreciate, but appreciate. At this point, you know, you guys have to do something. I and, agree. And it's a great tool that's out there for, for schools that have been behind, you know, and, and they've utilized it to catch up. And right now, they're getting smoked, man. They're getting smoked by Nebraska. I didn't even know Nebraska had a basketball <laughs> I team. I know. Like, they don't. <laughs> that was the intramural team that beat them. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love intramural. It was once so I played – Intramural softball, play intramural basketball, and we were we were champs my junior year in softball. Basketball was funny. There was a game where it was a it was a football team, intramural basketball squad, and another team. It was the <coughs> the juniors and the sophomores at the time. I was a sophomore, and you know I'm we're on offense, so I'm facing this way. This is at um, the intramural building, the IM building, the intramural yep. building, and everybody that's looking this way stops. And like dead stop, like they saw a ghost. The people playing this way, we couldn't see, so we, oh, excuse me, quick layup. And once I turned around, I saw where everybody else stopped. Lloyd Carr and the coaching staff were in the gym. Like, what the are you guys out here doing? We, we weren't supposed to play in the middle of basketball. So, yeah, so, that's what I thought. They didn't yeah, want football Somebody snitched, playing. and like legitimately, you see like the older classmen just like sliding out the back IM doors, sneaking out, trying to run. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, was, I, I was only a sophomore, I was like, Oh, man, is my scholarship over? <laughs> that wasn't the way it stayed. I mean, I used to hoop with, with Seth Irvin and yeah. Eric Morris, Big P Governs, uh, Robert Smith. Those guys were in IM all the time. Robert's my guy, man. Shout Love out to Robert. Robert. Uh, but we hope that CCR beat IM, but this was actually a league, and I think that's what got us in trouble. Oh, yeah. Is we played in the IM league, and we, play, we hooped all the time. But I think this one had a schedule. He knew what time we were going to be there. He knew. So I think somebody. So, so Braylon Edwards can hoop too? Down. Braylon Edwards can hoop too, huh? Uh, I'm like a Corey McGetty type player. All right. Like, I'm going to get you hustle points, slash block, it. steals. I'm going to slash, catch alley use. I'm yeah. not putting the ball during on the, court. the season? No, hell no. Nah. Was it after the no, season? No, it's after the season. So I, I, if I was a coach, I'd just let you, y'all play. In the real basketball, actually, is during football season. Oh, is it's it? like to, it starts at the end of. No, 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 no. I'm lying about that. It's during spring ball. No, no, no. So it's during, it's during spring ball, but it's not during football season. I'd let you play if I was a coach. Okay. Let, let y'all be students. Let you have fun. Intramurals is 
a so, wonderful time. Yeah. Now, if you start kicking it off in September, nah. then I got a problem with you. That's football and rugby, I think. Yeah, football and rugby. Now. Definitely got to sit your butt down. Um, Actually, I'd let you uh, play in September. Who cares if you're not uh, available for Bowling Green and Kent State? And but <laughs> then what if you tell your AC, what if you tell your ACL doing some foolishness and now you're starting wide receiver is out because he was playing animal basketball doing football. Yeah, you only be out for a week. You'll be ready for Purdue. Torn ACL? Illinois. No, no, you're not gonna tear. You going? ACL. You going to Aaron Rodgers? You're doctor? not gonna tear an ACL in, in an intramural football game or basketball game. Maybe not a young fella. I would, but you wouldn't. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of sitting down. Some of these teams have set down their big players. You look at uh, Chris Jones. We knew it was a pipe dream. Everybody was excited trying to see if the Lions were going after him. He signed for more than $30 million per year with KC. I mean, it's, it's a smart thing for them. There's yeah. a team that they got Patrick Mahomes on one side, you got Chris Jones on the other side. You'll have a chance to win a Super Bowl. $30-plus million, it's just a going rate. You saw big uh, Christian Wilkins from the Miami Dolphins sign four years, 210, 27 and a half with, I want to say, the Raiders. Him and Max Crosby are going to be a formidable line. But you're seeing the teams that want to make splashes, they're getting it done right now. So is Daniil Hunter the discount player that we can go out and get? $28 million for that's a, that's a hell of a discount. Wait, wait, Hunter went for 20? Wait, what? No, I'm saying Wilkins went for 27. I, yeah. I'm thinking Daniil Hunter, he'll be 26. You think that high at, the, at this point in his career? See, I think that he's the discount. I think, think he's, he's the discount? guy that we can get to stay in the NFC North we can go out and get and bookend him. But if, if we don't get one of those guys, I think it's going to happen through the draft, absolutely. They've yeah. got to give him some help on the other end. Because if you get a, a true rush from the other side, you're going to watch Hutchinson take a step that no one in the NFL is prepared for. Yeah, I, want to I understand that. it's the arms race, but these guys aren't worth it to me. Uh, you said 30, $27 million, $30 million. I just don't think you're going to get – Kansas City will probably get it because it's your own guy. When you get a free agent from another team and you pay him thirty million dollars, he's not going to be worth that thirty million to you. Now the fans are going to be happy that you got him. Yeah. And then a year later they'll be disappointed. Yeah, you're partially right about that. I think whenever you're going after a player like that, and you're bringing him to your team, then you know you're probably far away, or you probably you know have other pieces that you need too, and you spend that money. You're never gonna. It, ne it doesn't seem like they've getting the value. You look at Khalil Mack when he leaves the Raiders and he goes to Chicago. I don't think they ever got that value for him. Look at Devontae Adams, my favorite wide receiver in the league. Look at how it's been the first two years in the Raiders. If you don't have a quarterback and you don't have a system, you can't necessarily get the play that you deserve to get out of that that, uh, that person. But when you're paying, like you said, your own guy like Chris Jones has incentive because he's a chief already yeah he's a chief guy he wants right. to get him 30 million dollars per year worth the play out there Th three Super Bowl rings he wants a fourth one so you might be right about that when you go to a new team you don't know the system you haven't bought in yet you want to do your job as a pro but you're not fully a guy you go to you've spent five years somewhere else you got to shake that culture to embrace that one absolutely yeah, absolutely. yeah if I'm another team I'm not sure I I would jump at signing Jonah Jackson. Jonah Jackson is all hyped up about playing. He gets hurt playing. a lot. Yes, yeah, he he's hurt a lot. He gets hurt but a lot. he's hyped up about playing for this coach. Who's to say he's going to be? The, he's going to have the same enthusiasm yeah, be, yeah. for another team? He is on another team now. Oh, is he? Oh, hey. yeah. He's a Ram now, boys. Three there years, fifty-one million with thirty-four million guaranteed. That's wow. a lot of money. And that's not the only signing that just happened. We were talking that's about the big, good old Green Bay Packers. Look at this one. That's a big deal. Was oh. that average out to? Now this is going to be. Uh, it's, it's down. It's down one because okay. yeah, average goes. Here, here, it, it that's goes what up it averages out to. Yeah, right now, out. But anyway, this, here's the one. Yep. We were just talking about it. Talking about this division. Talking about who's making moves. Trying to compete with the Lions. Packers signed Josh Jacobs, running back of the. Uh, for Las how Vegas much? Well, how much? I want to know. Because I, I don't love that move for them at all. And that's what I'm saying. They have, uh, excuse Aaron me, Aaron Jones. Jones was the best running back statistically in the last seven games of the season. I think they're trying to replace what they thought, were, what they were hoping A.J. Dillon would be. Ah, uh, A.J. Dillon out of Boston College. Quadzilla, if you will. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting move. But once again, we just talked about Matt LaFleur. He had an idea what the offense is going to be. He's a guy that learned under Kyle Shanahan as well as Josh McVay or Sean McVay. 
he knows what that offense is going to look like and the pieces that it needs. And that offense got really good last year, but they didn't have Aaron Jones the whole season. That's a hell of a one-two punch, Aaron Jones and Josh Jacobs. This is a guy that just signed for $11 million for one year last year. Yeah. I'm curious what he, he signed for. That's, that's No details yet. That's a real nice depth piece, especially if they keep A.J. Dillon. Um, they've had issues with their running game outside of, of Aaron Jones, who's yeah, been spectacular. That's true. But that's a, that's a multi-purpose back that you want to utilize in your pass game quite a bit. Whoa. So if they can get a, 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 you know, a healthy and, and a ready-to-go yeah. Josh Jacobs, that's... That's scary. Pete, you and said, I, whoa, what's going on in the NFL? I have some big news here. According to Ian Rappaport, former Giants star running back Saquon Barkley is planning to sign with the Eagles. Per Ooh, Mike Garofalo. Whoa. That's scary. Ooh. Yep. So the Eagles bait essentially traded away Swift for Saquon Barkley. That's Just like the Lions here. traded away Swift for right. Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. He wow. keeps getting replaced, but at least he got paid this time. This is a move. Yeah, you look at what happened last year with the Eagles. The Eagles couldn't run the ball, which means they couldn't pass the ball. Jalen Hurts obviously was good in the past because of the run. Last year they didn't run the ball. They ran with him too much. He got hurt. I think this is the Eagles saying, well, we want to put the ball in Saquon's hands, put the ball on the ground, and maybe simplify that offense and try to open up the pass. I I don't like it for the Lions, but I like it for the Eagles. I'm a big Baquan fan. Yeah. That is Bay right there. I, I think there you Saquon, go, guys. Saquon uh, <laughs> in a real offense – is oh. absolutely going to explode. I still don't get the Vanilla Vic hype. I will never understand the contract. That whole team has been trashed. They've never had a good wide receiver in the last six years since they came in poached hours. Yeah. Um, ah. Seeing him in Philly he is going to be terrifying, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I, I, think, I think you're right. You're looking at Saquon Barkley. I just had to look his numbers up real quick. Um, the last two seasons, he's actually played almost full season. Yep. Like, he's been back healthy. Last year, he played 14 games, and he had 962 rushing. That's not bad. The season before that, he had 1,300 rushing yards. He played 16 games. So, I mean, I think they're getting the better version of Saquon, who's still like, – he can, he can tote that pill. He's done it despite that team. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. He's done it despite that, that offense, that quarterback, that lack of offensive – weaponry around him next to him uh what he's going to step into with philly first and foremost you're not going to have a linebacker that's going to be following you all game because they got to follow hurts yeah and and now you you you've got you've got two of the best wide receivers in the league Devontae's to take that off of you you got dallas goddard who's who's a, a hell like of a tight dallas end goddard. i like dallas you've got goddard. a great offensive line watch this kid go 15 1600 mm -hmm. plus and his all-purpose could be close to 2000 like his rookie year. That's right. It was over. Um, yeah, Dallas Goddard, you, they were a much better team. Last year he was injured. Yep. So now you get a Dallas Goddard that's healthy coming back this season. I think he uh, fractured, uh, fractured his forearm during last season. That's going to be scary. Yep. A scary move. Let's get back to the Lions for a second, though. You brought up, you put up, Pete, great job by you. Jonah Jackson now signs uh, with the – who did he sign Rams. With? He, he signed with the Rams. Stafford. I got it up that's here really for you. Matt Stafford. You go, my saw friend. Matt Stafford Again. like last year, man. Like they had some line problems. He still looked really good. It's going to be huge for them. What does that say about the Lions now? So now we have to look at the conversation about the draft a little differently, huh? We do. I, I'm still not drafting a guard at 29. Okay. Because I have so much faith in Brad Holmes being able to get that guy second, third, or fourth round. Maybe even the fifth round. Who knows? Sure. So um, – because also Kobe stores you, there. You, 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 have, about. Yeah, you have a bunch of guys. You have four-fifths of the offensive line who are cohesive. They know each other. They got little nicknames for each other. So now you've got to fit somebody else in and protect him and to let him play up to speed so that offensive line may not be as good as it was last year, but pretty damn close. This is another need that you got to go after the free agent market. Well, I mean, this is already a need that you should have taken with Jonah. Maybe not pay him that much because he got paid. It's a big deal. That's a good deal for Jonah Jackson. Who's out there available? I think now the Lions, they knew this was going to happen. This is where I think we should take a step back and let him cook, if you will. Uh, talking about Brad Holmes because he probably already he, he knew this. This was already on the table. They've already been vetting the process. They've been very quiet. Maybe they got somebody in mind already. Answer. Jonah's been probably the least consistent, at least being actually in the lineup. Yeah. For that that unit of five on the offensive line. Agreed. So I think that from the from the get he wasn't in their plans, and I think that that we've seen them not 
have any kind of um, just no importance on, on getting it, these players that have already signed elsewhere yeah. and the guys that have landed with other teams. I think that they have a plan. I think that they've done this each and every offseason. We've yeah. seen it. It's kind of it's ruffled some Detroit Lion fan feathers. But at this point, it's all in. Brad, we trust. And he's going to find that guy to fill out that offensive line, whether it's through the draft. And I'm not saying that we draft a guard at the end of the first round, Terry. I, I think that in the first two rounds, you will see this team draft an offensive lineman, though. Uh, just got to see that. win. Kirk Cousins, four-year deal with the Atlanta Falcons. With the Falcons, huh? Four-year deal with no the Atlanta Falcons. No Arthur Smith. He said, nope. No Minnesota. Minnesota Vikings free agent. I love that. Last He's minute change. And at the end of the day, you know what this deal is about. Four versus two is much better. Stability, you know you're good. You know you're vested. He can, doesn't have to worry about, I got to be hot year one, or they're going to cut year. That's really all this is. And they're giving them a shot. I think that's a great move for Atlanta. You're right. going to see Kyle Pitts return to 100 receptions after he did that as a rookie tight end. Will we ever see um, uh, what's the, the wide receiver from uh, Atlanta Falcons that went to USC? Is uh, Drake Drake London? Uh, Drake, do you think this helps Drake London? Does absolutely. Drake London get to take off as a wide receiver? He's going to absolutely take off. That offense is going to take off. You're going to see Bijan do the things that everybody was expecting him to do. Don't forget about Algiers. Algiers. Oh yes, nice I was just going to go there. Oh, yeah, it's a great one-two punch. You might have the best tight end in the league next year in Atlanta. And you've got one of the brightest young wide receivers who everybody forgot about last year, who's going to be center stage doing his best Justin Jefferson impression with Cousins throwing him the rock. And that's a green and white rock, my friend. Hey, look, I've never hated on Kirk Cousins. I think he's been a tremendous pro since he's gotten a chance to start. So you see no hate out of me there. Look, let's take a break, talk about some of these deals when we get back. I want to know, were these deals worth it? You see some deals that are made, even some trades that are made. One first-round uh, first round quarterback is no longer where he started. We'll get to that in a second. But first, Pete, where we're going? We're going to go uh, do a little bit of merch, and I have a new background here because we have new merch in the merch shop here, shop.woodwardsports.com. If you are tired of wearing the same old Detroit sports merch, it is a new era in sports wearables. Again, new designs are just out, amazing apparel, and the ultimate swag. Check out Woodward Sports' latest gear at woodwardsports.com and click Click shop, hoodies, tees, and the hats that are guaranteed to turn heads. Again, check out the latest designs today at WoodwardSports.com and click shop. Every year after a cold and dreary winter, oh. Metro Detroiters come the, together uh, for two things. The, Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Winning is a habit. So is listening daily to Woodward Sports. We're glad you're a winner, and thanks for listening. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod, perfectly fried clam shrimp platter, or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango IC, the ultimate compliment to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. Woodward Avenue, the first paved road in America. Woodward Sports, the first sports network born in Detroit and made for Detroit. 
Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Woodward Avenue, the first paved road in America. Woodward Sports, the first sports network born in Detroit and made for Detroit. Right, chicken. If you can see the picture, you know exactly what I'm talking about. New York style pizza, fresh salads, sides, and more. So for those of you out there dining, they got salads for you too. Uh, that is S A R O K I S dot com. Sorokis and Wolver Sports, and also we'll catch you later about that 50K challenge that Sorokis is a part of as well. Now, do you put a little hot sauce in your fried chicken, or, or do you only do it on the wings? No, fr- hot sauce goes on fried chicken. Okay, I'm just ask a question. Everybody doesn't do it. No, your fried chicken and hot sauce is like what? It's like peanut butter and jelly. Okay. I'm, I'm, not Amen. for everybody. Amen. What's not I for everybody? I want to ask this for you. Oh, uh, what about you? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, we, I know a bunch of people like, no, no, I don't want that on there. Some brothers? Mm-hmm. They ain't real They brothers. only put it on their wings. That's, they some fake brothers, man. I'm going to have to have a conversation <laughs> with these dudes, man. <laughs> fried chicken and hot sauce goes together. A lot of moves made today. A lot of signings. Some big ones, some small ones. I'm going to just go through some of these lists. Uh, Anson and then uh, t Foss. tell me if you like the signing for the team and what the pay was. We talked about Chris Jones. He signs a five-year, $95 uh, $95 million deal. Uh, huge deal, especially for a guy that's year 29. Mm-hmm. Anson, what's the deal worth it for the Chiefs? I don't love it, to be quite honest with you. That's 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 a lot of money, but yeah. you know, you you saw a different Chiefs team in Week One when they didn't have him and they didn't have Travis Kelsey. He's he's one of the best off defensive players in the league. He's a mauling mauling edge guy, and um, you know, they got three rings. I can't argue with with their decision making at this point. I love it. Okay. For the Chiefs, because yes, yeah, a lot of money. It's more money that I would pay if, if if I were in charge of the Lions. But that defense is so much different when he's not in there. Yeah. And their whole thing is, we're here to three P. And if they're going to three P, they need Chris Jones. Whether it's twenty, thirty, or forty million dollars, they had to do this in order to put themselves in position to win another Super Bowl. If he's not with them, they're not winning it. That, that's a great take. I think I think I overlook how important it is to get a three-peat. Because yeah. nobody ever done it. Chief, uh, the Patriots did it once, but they didn't even Not do it. Not three in a row. No, it's never happened. Oh, that's right. It's, it's, uh, you it's can, been like loops in between. You uh, sell the farm to get three in a row right now. Yeah, you get three in a row, you become a different franchise. That's right. I actually agree with you 100%. Actually, both of you guys. Chris Jones, he changes the complexion of that team. Like you saw that defense. Not even just him and what he is as a wrecking ball. It's the secondary. It's the back end. Like Jerry Sneed's not that good without Chris Jones. Yeah. You look at the other guy that they have, the rookie on the left side. They're not that good in all pro safety as well. That's when you put Chris Jones in the middle and they would get to that quarterback. One thousand percent. This is a move you make. You go all in for the three piece. That's right. And I think your city and everybody else. Plus, you get thirty extra million this year. So hey, what the hell? Let me say something to you, young man. If a team can't win three Super Bowls right. in a row with you in the lineup, how's anybody else going to win three Super Bowls in a row? That's true. Okay, so you shouldn't be so surprised it's never happened before. This is absolutely true because then you got to pay everybody. All right, <laughs> this is a Maz guy. We got this here for Tom Maz away. Uh, get Will Soon, big guy. We'll see you. He's a Baker Mayfield guy. You yep. know, and I, I like Baker at Oklahoma. I think along the way between – Oklahoma his last year and some of his antics and the Cleveland Brown experience, which I know is, is horrible. It's a terrible ride. Somewhere along there, I kind of like fell off the way. But I think that Rams game, when he came back, kind of bought me in a little bit, that in, the infamous comeback when they got 97 flags in their favor. And then last season with the Bucks, him starting off the season as a star quarterback for the Bucks. You got Ty Bowles as the head coach. I thought it was a tank year. Excuse me. I thought, the, I thought that the uh, – the, I thought the Bucks were going to tank, get him, get Ty Bowles fired, and then figure out what they were going to do with the number one pick this year. 
I was wrong. Baker Mayfield had a really good year, Pro Bowl year at that. And you saw it firsthand down the street. Baker Mayfield came to play this year. I like they three. So uh, three years, one hundred million for Baker. What say you? I'm I'm really happy for him. That team. Um, I mean, anytime time you lose Tom Brady, you're going to struggle for uh, identity yes. at the quarterback position. Yeah, I look think at the that Patriots. We'll talk about them soon. He's not short on Moxie. We knew that of him coming out of college, and he showed it with them this year. They've got a clever team, and again, change is, is a great predictor of failure in the NFL. You bring back a guy who's still pretty young, and he showed it. He took him to the playoffs. I love it for him, man. Get that kid paid. I agree with you, but I am so happy that Maz was trying to throw his weight around, getting him to come to Detroit. I'm so glad that did not happen. Oh, true. Sure. It, sure. He wasn't ready. I think the big thing for Baker, and we talked about it, Anson, when he was leaving Cleveland, Maz asked me, he said, hey, hey Bray, what, what, do you like Baker? Do you, think, <laughs> do you think Baker can be something? I said, Maz, he's got to have a conversation with himself in the mirror. And if he doesn't have that conversation, then he'll never be able to do how good he was at Oklahoma. You got to say, look, man, I'm not as fast as I thought I was. I'm not as tall as I think I am. And I'm not as good or great as I think I am. I got to get back involved with the team. I say, if he has that conversation, I could see it. I didn't think he was going to have it. I think he had that conversation. Like guys like Mike Evans who have been around Tom Brady, been around Jameis and other quarterbacks, they buy into Baker. Like they vibe as they an have. offensive unit. So I like what they were doing. I think it's, it's a worthy contract for him. Like you said, good stuff. Good stuff, Baker Mayfield. And you know what? A worthy contract for Tampa Bay. Hell but probably not for anybody else. So you're saying no one else would have gave him that. Yeah, I guess that's that's I just, it's I a reward more think, than anything. I think he's fine. But I'm not that impressed with him. It's thirty three million though. Like that's forty two is the going rate. Thirty three. Uh, yeah. But just not a Baker Mayfield guy. I feel I feel like thirty three million is like paying a quarterback about eighteen about five years ago. We're obviously a healthier franchise, but I think that him here would have been similar to him in Cleveland. Uh, it, those these two cities just chew, we we chew up quarterbacks. Any touch of failure. I mean, Jared Goff has been awesome for us, and there's still half the fan base riding him trying Don't to get him out. Don't let him play of outside town. in November. You get you get half the fan base like, see, I told you he can't throw when the wind blowing. I think the the Baker mistakes that you see on the field. Detroit Lions fans couldn't handle right now. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right about that. But you know what? What? Let's say he gets Tampa in the playoffs two out of the next three years. They don't want a playoff game. They'll be perfectly fine with that. That won't work up here. That's right. Yeah. That is absolutely right. Raise ex- expectations. Here's another one of these, uh, these mega deals, if you will. Christian Wilkins mm-hmm. of the Miami Dolphins goes to the Las Vegas Raiders. To the tune of four years, $110 million. And this deal off the heels of the Chris Jones re-signing. This is big money. And you're talking uh, $27 million a year per. But the thing about it, I'm going to go first. I don't like it. And the reason why I don't like it is the Raiders aren't anywhere near doing anything, anything. And you're spending all this money on one player. He's a darn good player, damn good player. But they were so far from anything last year. Watch him. And now you got first-year poaching and Antonio Pierce. Shout out to my dog. We were in New York around the same time. We used to do these Monday night parties, like Jets, Giants, Monday night parties. But um, I don't know, man. It doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room. And the team, like I said, wasn't close. I like it for Max Crosby, but not much else. Well, for all the reasons Terry just said he loves the Chris Jones signing, I have to agree with you. I don't like this situation. They're not going for three in a row. Hell no. You know, they got Aiden O'Connell maybe as their quarterback. Good now, point. I wouldn't want to face as a quarterback if I'm Justin Herbert. I'm worried about going against the Raiders, you know, front four. But, no, I don't like that for them at all. I, I really was hoping he was going to come here. Yeah, a lot of fans in Detroit were yeah, looking I, at him. I with think this eyes. is sometimes you sign guys to show your fans something, to show mm-hmm. your fans. Yeah, we're serious. It may not be the best or most prudent signing, but we're going to show these people that we are trying to do something. That's probably not going to work out. But, you know, the other hand, you get him next to Max Crosby, so you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. This is true. And, you know, and the Raiders have been doing that basically my entire life. Mm-hmm. Whether they're getting the fastest guy in the draft or spending oh on somebody, they're not ready, but they're going to show you that they, they spend it. You know, they're excited. Yeah, like and they learn. No, it might they learn from his father? Raiders. Al Davis. There's no game plan, but we're going to give you flashy pieces, That's right? And hope it works <laughs> out. That's right. That sounds like uh, six and eleven. Here we go. Uh, we just talked about it, too. We talked about uh, uh, DeAndre Swift, hit Detroit to Philly, now Philly to the Bears. Three years, $24 million. 
What do you think on this one? I think I'd rather spend another 10 on Saquon. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at. I think too inconsistent for me to pay him $8 million a year. Well, we're going to find out how much of his success in Philly was on the back of him being comfortable there versus how good of, of a running back he is. Because I don't know. Again, we talked about it. If Fields leaves, you've got a brand new general running the show in, in Chicago. Maybe not a mobile guy that's not going to open things up for a guy like Swift the way that Hurts did. Um, I, I think we could see him come crashing back down to earth, and I hope it happens in Chicago. Yeah, what are you like? You're a Swift, you're a Swift guy? You're no. a Swifty? I'm, I'm a Swifty depending <laughs> on where he is. Okay. I think this might blow up in the Bears' face. Um, he didn't work out here. He had some nice games in Philadelphia. Maybe Philly was his sweet spot. Maybe they knew – you know what was up with him and, you look and, at that offensive line for philly for philadelphia well, philly has always uh, had that's a very why. good offensive line lane right. johnson's on that team last year I, I think jason kelsey's your center i think that this might blow up in the bears face yeah i think so too eight million for me is just too much you talk about inconsistency this guy has been inconsistent last year his best year shout out to him but the years before that he's going to miss four or five games a year and he doesn't seem to be into it i wouldn't do it if i were them um Here's an interesting trade. Let's jump on this one. Mac Jones traded from the New England Patriots that drafted him first round four years ago to um, to the Jaguars, excuse me, who already have Trevor Lawrence for a sixth round pick in return. T, I come to you first. What are your thoughts? Were you a Mac Jones guy, and do you like this acquisition or trade? I've always been a Trevor Lawrence guy. I'm saying. Uh, I always thought that something, you know, the magic was going to happen some year because I think he's strong. I got the colors on right now. He's got a, a strong arm. I think he has good command of the offense. Just hasn't worked out for him yet, but it's, it's going to hit yeah. at some point. I am not a Mac Jones guy. I just I don't see what they see in him. But, you know, I guess it's going to be a good quarterback competition. I mean, can't you just sign a Mac Jones for free instead of spending a six-round pick for him when, you're, when you just miss the playoffs and need everything you can get? That was my thoughts. I mean, maybe they're looking at it from the standpoint where we're giving up a six-round pick and we're, the, we're getting a guy that went to the uh, was drafted in the first round. He went to the Pro Bowl, went to the playoffs his first year. So maybe that some of that is down there, in there, because you want to have a good backup quarterback. Sure. And maybe they believe they can help you. Doug Peterson is quarterback guru or whisper. At least he was when he had Frank Reich on his staff. Maybe that's what they're thinking. Maybe they can help him. Maybe they can put him in a good space. I never liked Mac Jones. Yeah. I thought he was a product of having five-star wide receivers and running backs to Alabama, nothing more. But, hey, But I also believe they don't truly believe in Trevor Lawrence. Why? I mean, and, and New England basically gave him away. He said, you want him here, take him. Yeah. We don't want him anymore. It's is it they don't believe in Trevor Lawrence, or is it the inconsistency that's been around him? But let's not forget, Trevor Lawrence's first year head coach was Urban Meyer. We all saw how that worked out. Yeah. Dumpster fire. And then you see Doug Peterson last year. Doug Peterson, since winning the playoff game two years ago, he and Trevor Lawrence have taken a step back, plus he was injured. So I don't want to put so much on Trevor Lawrence as much as I would say. I think it's inconsistency. The Urban Meyer thing blew up in their face. And then Doug Peterson hasn't necessarily been good on offense the last two years or last year. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not a T-Law guy. I think that the Jaguars are, are overrated. I didn't see them as a playoff team. They weren't a playoff team. Maybe, maybe they know a little more about T-Law than they're letting on to. Um, I think point. Mac Jones is, is a legit backup quarterback. Yeah. So, so giving up a six-rounder isn't terrible for them. But that team needs help, I think. I, I'm not sold on the Jaguars. I'm not sold on T-Law. Um, so maybe that coaching staff isn't either. Yeah, you got a point. All right, question. Do you okay. just make uh, Mac Jones your backup, or do you have a legitimate uh, quarterback quarterback competition and the, may the best man win? Or is it still Trevor Lawrence? It's a great question. I, I think there's, it, is, it is a great question. I think there's a way in which you can do it where Trevor Lawrence understands the pressure of the, the, the situation, but at the same time still knows he's a starter. Because yeah. Trevor Lawrence has won a playoff game. I mean, he was the number one draft pick for this uh, team three years ago. It, it'd be hard for me to bring in Mac Jones, who's a bum, and like, hey, it's open competition. But I would try to find a way in which to tell Trevor Lawrence, hey, if, you know, if you are here messing up, though, 
Like this can turn into something more. This can turn into something more than what it, it, it is right now. And that's kind of what the Lions did, but they were able to escape the true controversy by drafting Drafted Hendon Hooker. Hendon, yeah. Because you've got a full year where he's not having to worry, Jared Goff, about a, a true competition. And he took the job this year. Yeah. Nobody's talking competition this offseason. You know? But Mac Jones, that's the conversation that there's enough Mac Jones fans around that they're going to look at him as, hey, why, why can't he be the starter? You know, yeah. I, I, I don't let's, believe let's in Let's look at this situation here. For almost a decade, didn't we say, well, Matthew Stafford's got carte blanche. He's got no competition. He's got no pressure on him. Yeah. And maybe that's what pre- prevented the Lions from taking off. So now you're giving Trevor Lawrence some competition, somebody looked over his shoulder at. So, you, you, A, you got to believe that he can handle that competition. Uh, for instance, I don't yeah. think Staff, Stafford could handle that. I don't think, don't think you could bring in Mac Jones or Trevor Lawrence to back him up with JJ McCarthy. the Lions. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> but that's, A, hey, I'm saying, they got pick 19. You got Matt Stafford is already, I mean, J.J. will be gone before 19, but. But, Terry, I love that take because I always called Trevor Lawrence Stafford AFC. I mm-hmm. think they're super similar, very, very similar. There's a, um, a lack of, of just, I guess, emotional commitment on T-Law's side yeah. that I also saw in Stafford. You don't see him politicking with the refs. You don't see him engaging with the guys on the sideline like you do top tier quarterbacks yeah. and so his slight detachment um maybe maybe you hit the nail on the head with that with maybe mac mac is coming in to to push this guy yeah and i think for t law i think the reason why it's like that you're absolutely correct you can see it there's no just sense of urgency if you will in terms yes. of that regard but he that's how he was at clemson and he won a national championship so I think when you win at the highest, well, it's not the highest, but close to the highest level, and you win a certain way, you're not going to change now. I think that might be a part of it. He was real, remember, he was real quiet at Clemson. Yep. He's a quiet guy. The leader was Etienne, who's on his team anyway, the running back. Yep. Damn good running back, too. All right, we got the numbers on the Kirk Cousins deal. Oof. Now let's see if this deal is worth it. You talk about Atlanta Falcons and the four-year deal. Four years, $180 million, so basically 45 per, which is what he was essentially asking for in Minnesota. I, I I think it might be too much for you. Wow. Was that deal too much? Not if you're the Falcons. Not if you're uh, the Falcons. Okay. Now, we were talking about that $50 million over above for uh, golf. Yeah. It's 50 or above now. Yeah. But, but just... okay, and, and you're right. And to my point, we're going to see if the Lions have something new, if the Lions are going to start a new trend in NFL finance. Do these guys buy in enough to to the new Lions, the brand new Lions, where each one of those big three, Panay Sewell, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Jared Goff, are willing to say, okay, well, I should be paid more than, than Kirk Cousins, because he should, yeah. but I'm willing to take 45. Watch what we do. I, I think you definitely get that out of Jared Goff. I don't know if he's going to take 45, but I think he definitely will give you a discount. Maybe he takes 47.5, I mean, which is a $2.5 million deal. You start adding that up, that makes more money. I think because this is a city that believed in him. Yeah. I think this is a team that believes in him. Hell, you got the city yelling out his name in every home game. That's right. I think he will see that, and he sees the bigger picture. He's always been cool, quiet, humble. I think you'll see a discount out of uh, Jared Goff 100%. I think so. I'm but, not convinced. I got to see it to believe it. You got to see it to believe it? Yeah, because there's so much pressure on these guys. In the NFL, yeah. you know, they never feel they, they're getting paid what they're worth because all this money is not guaranteed. And you have uh, the pressure from the players' union that wants to make sure everybody gets paid so you can both up that next salary. In that case, they need to have a problem with Patrick Mahomes. Because Patrick Mahomes is an individual that he took a super discount considering what people were talking about. Never seen a quarterback like him. He's already better than Brady. He took a major cutback considering what he could make and what he could hit the Chiefs. So I think maybe that actually helped other franchises. Because now if I'm the Detroit Lions, I'm like, hey, look, man, you see what Patrick Mahomes did down Mm -hmm. there, and they're winning. That's, That's a hell of an example to pull from. I wouldn't have paid Mac Jones four years 180, though. At the end of the day, I keep saying the same thing. Cousins. He's 35. Oh, excuse me. Cousins, uh, right. Kirk Cousins. He's 35 years old. He'll be 36 when the season starts. And he tore his Achilles last year. You're talking about playing on field turf with a bad Achilles for a guy that's 36 when the season starts. I just was – I'm a little leery of that. And now you're committing to four years? Yeah. 
If I'm the Falcons, I don't know if this is the best move. That's some Falcons move right there, though. It, <laughs> it is. That's what the Falcons do. They don't always make the best moves. That's right. Definitely not the That's best right. move. Here's a move for you. It's a cheaper move, but I think you get a guy that knows his way around the, the team and is a staple and a leader. Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett, one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL. Two years, $30 million with his team, the Seattle Seahawks. I like this. I think this was a smart move. It was a safe move. He's a guy that is very consistent. He gives you a lot of production, and he's one of the team leaders. I like the move. Well, you got DK and JSN, two of the most exciting young guys. And I mean, DK's not necessarily young anymore, but these are two monster, big-bodied, awesome wide receivers, yeah. young. And you got a guy in Lockett that, that really is – He's the Amon Ra of that offense. You know, True. when they need a big play, they need a third down conversion, that's the guy. So to be able to lock him up and keep him around for the development of JSN and the true ascension of DK to the number yeah. one of that team. I like it, but he, Lockett obviously knows what's in store for him. He knows that he's not going to be that number one guy anymore. No. He's probably not going to be the number two guy anymore. So I like moves like that when you see a veteran who's been an important part of your offense, seeing the writing on the wall and still sticking around for it. Yeah, no, I like it too. I think by not having to pay JSN because he's only going to year two, I think that's how you're able to give Tyler Lockett a little bit more because a little bit more Money, because you know, older you should say Tyler like but fifteen million dollars. That's because they don't have to pay JSN. I like the move, and then DK, DK Mecca, he kind of took a step down last year, maybe a little bit. Yeah, a couple games here and there, but I think I monster, think, still a monster. He is no one hundred percent. It is. He has an interesting attitude. He has an interesting attitude by himself. So, but, don't uh, love it, don't hate it. Yeah, but okay. I, I respect him from the standpoint that he's not kicking and screaming and wants more money because he, he understands what the pecking order is and he's willing to accept it, which is good for the team concept. Plus, when you're not winning, like, there's not much you can say. Like, you get to a point you stop winning, and I understand that he's won there, but didn't go to the playoffs last year. They got bounced in the first round the year before that, and then the year before that, they didn't make the playoffs. So it's kind of like, all right, we don't win. I can't say too much. Yeah, but I've seen losers who said, well, if you went to me more, we'd be winning. That's true. That's true. Looks like this is the going rate. Here's another running back deal. Three years, $24 million. Tony Pollard goes to the Tennessee Titans. Somebody that the last year, the year before, no, last year, Dallas Cowboys were thinking about franchising. I don't think it worked because they overestimated how good Tony Pollard could be. But how do you like this move for the Tennessee Titans, Tony Pollard? I would rather seen the Titans get Josh Jacobs, I think. I like agree. I think Tajay Spears is Tula, Tula. a younger form of Tony Pollard. I mean, call. he's a fantastic receiving back. He's shown the, the ability to be the. I mean, through the last I think eight weeks of the season, there was only one time that that um, I'm blanking on the on the stud in front of him. His name probably going to be a Hall of Famer. Who's the kid from Alabama? Uh, main Derek Henry. Yes, thank you. Derrick Henry is getting less of the snap count over the last half of the season yeah. than Ty J. Spears was. He's obviously the future there, so I don't understand why you get a, a running back that basically does the same thing for you. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I like Ty J. Spears a lot. Actually, I was looking for the Lions to pick up Ty J. Spears. Yes. This is before, same. obviously, they drafted Jameer Gibbs in the first round. But now has Derrick Henry been hit more than anybody in the league? Yeah. Some running back, and maybe that, that, maybe that was the deciding factor. Yeah, he's the a Pollard, he, uh, you know, he played a so – first he was a number two back and then he became the number one back. So maybe he doesn't have as much wear and tear, and so you're willing to pay him a little bit more. And Pollard was very good as a number two back, one yeah, of the best was. in the league. And I, th I felt he struggled this year as the lead cow over in, uh, in, in Dallas. So I, I just – I don't like it because I think I see their skill set so similar. Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. I never thought he was number one. I thought he was a true two backing up Zeke Elliott. He was real good when he was doing that. Uh, another deal on the table. Actually, I don't know about the price on this one, but I just want to ask you, do you like the fit for this guy? Russell Wilson signs with the Pittsburgh Steelers, so now he is a Pittsburgh Steeler. He's no longer with the Denver Broncos. How do you like that move for the Steelers? It seems like, um, excuse me, seems like, 
they just struggled at the quarterback position, whether it's bringing in Mitchell Trubisky, who Chicago could have told you that wasn't going to work. Then you bring in Mason Rudolph, and that just never took off. You draft Kenny Pickett, has a game or two good, but it's just overall, you know he's not it. This is a stable move, I think, for the Steelers in trying to bring some stability to what is a horrible position for them since Ben Roethlisberger retired. Mike Tomlin. Yeah. Uh, Mike Tomlin. Um, I, I think Kenny Pickett it's pretty much trash. You saw him severely outplayed by Mason, Mason Rudolph. Rudolph. You know, they were not a playoff team, and he snuck them in somehow. Yeah, I think that Russ, what he's been dealing with, this is the best and 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 most solidified landing spot that he could have mm-hmm. to resurrect the end of his career. One hundred percent, I agree. T, I'm gonna come to you and ask a separate question about the same thing. Will Russell be able to help that locker room, especially at the wide receiver position? Because that was an ugly room yes, uh, last year. De- Deontay Washington had his blow-ups on the sideline. George Pickens, you saw him in the playoff game not wanting to block in the cold and get his running back beat up. Like, yep. First of all, if I was playing, like when we were playing and I chose not to block somebody, it, that sideline is not how it works in real life. You would have got your ass whooped in the locker room. Like it'd have been, it would have been the offensive line would have heard about it, saw it on film, film running backs would have saw it, and it would have been a showdown in the locker room. That's why, luckily, I like blocking. But <laughs> that's an ugly room, man, and, and it's an immature room, and Russ doesn't seem mm. like the guy that's the natural-born leader, as you realized in the last couple of years. No, he's not going to be able to solidify that wide receiver room. Yeah. There were rumblings even when he, when he was in Seattle, and they were winning. There was rumblings that, this may not be the guy. I'm talking about amongst oh, yeah. players. He may not be the Percy guy. Percy Harvin. Right. Yeah. So then he goes to Denver. It's a disaster. I think the one word I would use is desperation hmm. on the on the standpoint from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, They've had all these quarterbacks, and they haven't worked out. I think at the end of it, we're going to say Russell Wilson didn't work out either with Pittsburgh. And... When you, this is what this is the way I look at Grass Pittsburgh trying strong. to get <laughs> got their <laughs> eyes closed, hoping I can find a diamond somewhere. Yeah, I think I think you guys are both right. I think this is a desperation move by Pittsburgh because look, they did not prepare properly for the departure of Ben Roethlisberger. We know what it was; they didn't prepare, and now that's why in a situation. But I think you're absolutely right too. What hasn't Russell seemed to have, and it's the support of the coaches, whether it's him, Pete Carroll, and then Nathaniel Hackett and himself, and then last year that. It happened here at Ford Field with with uh, Sean uh, Sean Payton and Russell. It doesn't seem like he's had the support from coaches. Mike Tomlin's going to have his back. Mike yeah. Tomlin would be able to put an arm around him. I think both of you guys are right. Desperate by them, but great in Russell to get to that situation. Look, we're going to take a quick break yes, and sir. then come back with some more of these trades and signings. Pete, tell me where we're going, brother. We're going to do some Premier Pet for Maz and his dog, Jeter. You may want to give your pet the best. Premier Pet Supply is hands down Michigan's best pet store. Same prices and all the conveniences of the online and big box realtors. With one major difference, family and locally owned and operated for 30 plus years. Over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts there to help you. Same day, local, curbside, and home delivery. Premier Pet Supply, give your pet the best. www.premierpetsupply.com. And also, I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. The good news is Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed. Swiss will make sure your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit them online at SwissINS.com and tell them that Woodward Sports sent you. Every year after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. 
featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. You have an opinion? Make sure it's seen and heard. Corner, jumper, and Tweet us, hop on the YouTube chat, slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the offseason smells good. Woodward Sports. Showtime, you know what time it is. 50K Bracket Challenge sponsored you by Woodward Sports and Sorokis and Glorious Look. You see the QR code on the screen right now? All you got to do is scan it. It's so easy. Already registered. See how fast it took now? It'll probably take a little longer. But you get the drift behind it. 50K is a lot of money. T, you trying to win 50000 yeah, I'd, I'd have a good time. Did you already register? You already in for the tournament? Uh, sure. It's but no, I, I'm ineligible. If, if you get a perfect bracket, I would have a hard time finding anybody to tell you you lost. <laughs> Anson, I know you're going to be in this year. I don't know if I'm watching the tournament, but I'm definitely going to get in on the <laughs> challenge to win the money. And also, let's take you over to Les Stanford. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand for more products and to more people. This is exactly what Les Stanford has done by adding Les Stanford Buick and GMC. The same great service that customers have come to know and trust. On Woodward and just south of Nine Mile, you know what it is. LesStanford.com, LesStanford.com. Together, let's drive. All right, Ryan, you got to bring yourself back, man, so we can be a combo on that read, man. I'm just supposed to say, let's drive. You're supposed to do all the other reading with Les Stanford. Just joking, Ramani and Edwards, Maz, filling in today, Anson, and my man T. Falls. T. Falls, I was supposed to go to a basketball game this past Saturday, downtown at LCA, and it looks like I missed a hell of a game, but also like I missed something even more. Yeah, what the, the hell happened with Troy Weaver? Troy Weaver did something you never do, you're never supposed to do in sports. He put a LeBron? No, no. Don't make a one, turn a one day story into a two day story. Uh, right? Now that's, that's the cardinal sin. Um, you know, Troy Weaver got upset because uh, this. Because his team sucks. It, it, and it's well, his fault. And, and somebody pointed out to him that his team sucks. Here we go. Like, this is embarrassing. Like, yeah, I, I know the guy's annoying, but don't kick him out. Like, don't kick somebody out when you got eight wins on the season. Uh-uh, uh, ten. Oh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> and you have 51 losses. Don't kick somebody out when they're pointing out that you're that Actually, he's telling the truth. But also, you only got ten wins, man. Like, I, I didn't see it, but I heard about it. Now I'm just, Troy Weaver is like somebody he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just lost. You know, as a Detroit heckler, every year uh, they, they uh, came out me. with... Go don't, ahead. Don't sell yourself short. A famous Detroit heckler. Well, the best heckler in the NBA. Pat Riley. Jerry Sloan said, said it. There you go. You know? <laughs> but as that, each year they gave me a different set of, of rules. Right. To the point where the last couple of years they told me I could only yell seated. And what? the fact is if somebody's keeping it clean, don't sit by him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when you when you do something like that, Terry, I love that take. Don't make a turn a one story into a two story day. One you day. Know, or right. One day story into a two story or two day story. Because yeah. that's Tom what he's was. done. This is taking life. 
we hit the sleeper app. I don't know if you guys know sleeper fantasy, but I, all of a sudden I get this alert on that story from Woodward Sports. And, I mean, we've already got nothing to talk about but losing right now, yeah. and that's just a loser situation. It's Plus, a real I bad mean, situation. What does Troy Weaver expect? He's sitting in the stands, and this team has been awful for a decade. And he still paid tickets to come see that team play. Right. The man paid his money. Yeah. We think he showed up. So I wouldn't even show up. So you got to respect the guy for even showing up. But, but, but the fan was looking for trouble. But I'm sure he thought he was speaking for all fans or most Piston fans that, A, Troy Weaver has done a poor job. B, this is the second quote-unquote rebuild where you've rebuilt, rebuilt it from nothing. And, and Piston fans have to be the most frustrated people in the city now. Rightfully so. Man. Troy Weaver is encroaching on Matt Millen's status. Wow. Oh. Wow. Oh. You, you remember that? Oh. You remember oh. the Millen Man March? 0-16. Oh, wow. Yeah. Remember 0-16? Oh, yes, sir. I was at the Millen Man March. Took part in that. How you still got it? your orange? I, you know, I just, I wanted, I wanted the, the Fords to feel us. You know, yeah. and, and they have, obviously, because they've, they've put some right people in the, in the right place. But, you know, real quick while we're on the Pistons, I was watching Isaiah Thomas on the pivot recently, and I learned something about you, Terry Foster. Me? And that Damn. You were the, in fact, the Pistons absolutely made sure it happened. But you were the first minority beat reporter in the NBA. That's correct, right? Not in the NBA for the Pistons. Oh, for the Pistons. Well, for the well, way it was that. The first time that they had two minority NBA writers covering a team it was me and Drew Sharp. Okay. Oh, there you it's go. Fantastic so, I history, first, though, man. I came along, the, the black sports writers. How old are you? Jesus. 65. Okay, I thought you were No, 80. but the, at the time, the, um, the black uh, NBA writers, me, Boudini Sharp, Stephen A. Smith, Stephen uh, A. He was a Philly, right? Uh, yeah. Rob Parker and all Rob. his little henchmen Come in New York. Oh, man. Oh, he was. Uh, I tell you, our stops in New York with Rob and his boys were hilarious. We would just go to, like, a, a restaurant and just talk, and we would just be in stitches where I would be crying. And Rob's funny. I would cry <laughs> yeah. every time I, I go to New York. And him and his his favorite argument is the uh, is the Tom Brady argument. He's the loot. I know the luckiest of all time. That's what he calls Tom Brady. Oh, uh, uh, one of his boys wrote this article. It, it would never appear in the news of the free press, but um, a college basketball team was just getting hammered. They were down by forty or fifty, and so the crowd started filing out with like fifteen minutes left in the game, and he described it. As premature, premature. Oh my! I know where you're going. With that. <laughs> I think I know. I think I think Evacuation. I know <laughs> <laughs> and I was dying. Premature evacuation. I, I, that's a good one. Yeah, that is that is a very good one. I think I would have been in stitches. But we too. we couldn't do that here. Yeah, no. That is. Oh no! Hell, hell no! We're not doing this. Blah 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 blah. No, blah. yeah, the fake lefts. Um, getting back to the pistons I, and. Yeah, just thinking about it from this standpoint, like where do the Pistons go? Like, where is the fan base? And we're talking about the Million Man March. I mean, well, the Million Man March. We're talking about what Detroit Lions fans had to do to show that this wasn't acceptable, whether it's Troy Weaver, whether it's Tom Gores never being here, whether it's the draft and the way in which you're doing it. What's the next step? Because they got a game tonight. They play against the hosts. I mean, they host against the Hornets downtown. People shouldn't go to these games. I'm not going. I had I had free tickets from the GM and I ended up not going. I don't know why I'm paying hard earned money to see a product that doesn't care about itself, Anson. I mean, when the Lions went 0 and 16, it was a sold out game. Think about that. Yeah. So we're we're desperate, but we're also the best sports fans in the country. So, I mean, it's a pretty vacant vacant gym over there down at LCA for the Pistons games. Uh, but you're not going to ever see anybody just stop going. I honestly believe that Troy Weaver was handed a really dysfunctional franchise with a dysfunctional owner, 
Um, he's been handcuffed, oh not being able to choose his, his coach. And what he got in his salary and the break the breakdown of players that he had and what they cost and how we were playing people that weren't even on the team. He's cleared all of that out to the point where now we've got about sixty million dollars. We've got yeah. six core players that are basically all on their rookie deals, and got a lot of money. I don't know what we're going to be able to do with it because I don't know who the hell would want to come here outside of Miles Bridges to resurrect his Ooh. reputation. But um, I do hope that they land Cody Williams in the draft. I don't see much else aside from just focusing on the youth right now and hoping that they can somewhat create a culture that's similar to what the Lions have done just recently because the, the Pistons are, are in a whole world of hurt if they can't make it happen. This, this is the offseason that Weaver's been building for in my eyes. Yeah. And if he can't capitalize it, I don't know who can. Well, here's so, here's here's what the next fan base needs to, or the next fan needs to do. Next time Tom Gores comes to a game, if that ever happens, Egg. by the way, he's never there. Somebody needs to go up to him and say, "You suck as an That's owner." That's right. Because he was told, "Don't make Stan Van Gundy the coach and the general manager." Yeah. Well, then he felt he had to, you know, wrestle him away from the Golden State Warriors, who I think was playing the game with him. So he hired Stan Van Gundy as the coach and GM when he was told, don't do it. Second thing he did, um, I think he was the one that brought Blake Griffin here because he was a uh, he was a NBA fan Sell out in L.A. He liked Blake Griffin. I mean, and, but the, Blake, the Blake experience. No, 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 no. Blake wasn't going to work listen, out the Listen, Blake, the Blake experience I, is, was better than I think people give it credit for. No. I th- look, they made the playoffs and people went to the games because it was Blake Griffin. Like, that's at the end of the day when you're de- – how many playoff games they win with Blake Griffin? They went. Zero. They won zero, 100%. Exactly. I feel you, but the Pistons and, and didn't he have He hated to. being here. Yeah, true. He, mm-hmm. he, he never, you never saw him out. You never saw him active in the community. Blake was, was an awful, awful move, yeah. and, and we're still paying the price for it. Um, the fact that we, this team could have been sold to Matt Ishbia <laughs> last year, a, a, a son of Michigan, a, a, a national championship winner and a guy that obviously can turn anything into platinum and you let him go out to Phoenix. Mr. Gores, you already made 4X on your investment. Why are you here still? Yeah. To throw out shirts? And, and he no. does a good job throwing those T-shirts. He does. He's got a strong arm for he, old man. A whole lot of photos of him doing that. The thing he did <laughs> was, okay, you hire Troy Weaver. Let him do his job. He, then you bring Amen. in Arm Tellum, you bring in Arm Tellum's son, you bring in all these other people. And so Troy Weaver isn't making all the decisions. He didn't pick that coach. Right. He didn't pick his coach. Yeah. There's a bunch of players he didn't pick. That's how the Lions used to do it. Yes. Amen. You know, I mean, you'd have, uh, and, and I'm very critical of Matt Millen, but you had Matt Millen in who wanted certain players. The owner would come in and say, nah, we really need a quarterback. And so they would circumvent what he wanted to do uh the lions were the poster children of we're gonna have a gym but we're gonna let, not let him do his job yeah. <laughs> that's real then that's shots. what, t- that's like what that. gores yeah. did yep. with weaver yeah that's so real. next time folks if tom gores sh- ever shows up to a game please go up to them him and say you suck as an owner please I do love that. that and he will be banned for life just like uh, Charles Oakley was. I, from, I know, but from you know what? Knicks. Hey, if you're banned from a Piston game, how much have you lost? How uh, much have yeah. you really lost? Nothing. I'll tell you what. That is heartbreaking for me as a lifelong Pistons yeah, fan to hear. to hear that from Terry Foster and, and know be, it's the truth. <laughs> and that, yep, and the truth. That is the element that really sucks about it. Uh, you brought up, you brought up uh, Miles Bridges, Michigan State guys. You took a shot at my program earlier, and rightfully so, because we suck. You saw seeing that. Don't act like your program is doing that much better. Is it March? It is. Are we in the tournament? Nope. We're yeah. not? Hey, boy. You, we it, missed it? Hey, you, it's. Did you, we miss it, really? You, you like this. Oh, you, 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 shoot. You're right on the line. Oh, right, so, so it's, we still got a chance. Yeah, you still got a chance. Yeah, okay, well, it's March. Do. That's got, what we do. It's Izzo, it's Izzo time. Th- this, this is true. Michigan State falls to Indy, uh, as you saw, 65-64. Tom Izzo's never missed a dance. You never missed it. It, it. This would be a hell of a time to start now. Like, I think time should have been stopped. But if he misses the dance, does his legacy take a hit? 
Absolutely. Basketball is down in the state of Michigan. That yeah. is for sure, certain. And I got to be honest, we're watching all of these highly successful dinosaurs in college athletics That's a good way to put it. leaving because they can't keep up with this new portal. The yeah. NIL is changing everything. And um, I got to be honest with you, you know, Izzo's reluctance to chase the blue chip prospects because he doesn't want to lose them to the NBA right at right in, a year later. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's the state of current sports. If you want to be yeah. the best, you got to get the best, and then you got to get them again the next year. But and you know, I don't, he, I don't think it's, he doesn't want to get them. He just doesn't feel like going through all this stuff. <coughs> he feels he's uh, above this. Uh, he likes the old, the way it used to be, but things have changed. All old guys yep. do. So Saban felt the same way, right? Mm-hmm. One hundred percent. So you know he stepped down, and maybe that's what Izzo needs to do. Yep. It, it, it might be time, and it, it hurts me to say that. Yeah. You know, I was there. I went to school there in two thousand when we won the national championship. Hey, look, I've, I've always said this on the record. I'm a Tom Izzo guy. I yeah. went to Michigan, but I love Izzo. Yeah. The uh, it, it it might be time, and and this could be the signal if they if they're not playing in the tournament. Maybe it's a blessing wow. in disguise. Could be. Maybe he'll realize, okay, my way isn't working. We ne we didn't make the tournament. You bring in a young guy to take over. Also, too, I think there's still some grace in, let's say you don't make the tournament, but you finish 19 and 13. There's some grace in saying, hey, look, it was 19 and 13. It, was, it wasn't the worst. It could be Michigan. It could end like it's ending right there in Ann Arbor. So I think 19 and 13, if you miss the tournament, I think it's – 19 wins is almost 20. It's it's good enough, I think, to hang your hat on. You think well, the, I, 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 hey, I'm going to show my age. I'm an old dude up here. When I was your age, young fella, if you <laughs> no cell phones. if you won 19 games, there was no cell phones. You true. were in. But if you won 19 games, you know where you hit The NIT. Yeah. <laughs> Guaranteed. Unless oh. you were, unless you won them huge schools, like when they would get, they yeah, get you a unless pass. you beat Duke three times or something in true. one season. But you were headed to the NIT. So does, that's true. Does Michigan, Michigan State won does, the NIT when I was in college? That's does Izzo we get the benefit of the doubt from the committee, though? That's that's the saving yeah. grace. You know, they might get in because the committee wants Michigan State yep. in the Because it's, it's still one of the – just like we were talking about, there's no iconic coach in football anymore. There's only a couple in basketball, and Izzo is probably the icon in basketball right now. The last remaining one. He's the last one. I, I would. I would let him in. I love you, Brad. That's Brandon. probably the only yeah, reason yeah, they'll get in. Because there is a possible icon on the, the rise, though, in Dan Hurley. Well, look, he's been a lot of goodwill in the past – only thing he has done is win that second national championship. He's been close. Oh, so I actually close. was there in 09. COVID year was our year, baby. Yeah, yeah. You guys got played. Well, you and a bunch of other teams. But in basketball, men's college, Michigan State, they look like the team. They did like 10. Look, we're going to take one last break and then I we'll come back. I hope they don't make the turn. You, that's, won't be a hater I, I, all your no, life. No, I don't want to see. See, I thought see. you just hate on Michigan. You hate on Michigan State too? Yeah. yeah you just <laughs> oh, 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 you should talk to my wife. She's a Spartan. Oh, yeah. You really don't She's like Michigan State. I hate Michigan State. I'm convinced you hate Michigan. I don't hate anybody. I just tell it like here's Here's what I – here's here's my thought. I don't buy the Michigan bullshit 100% of the time. Amen. Right, if you if you if you buy Michigan's hey, crap ninety five percent of the trying, time, look, don't do that. Enemy and my enemy is my no, friend. No, no, no. Crap. If if don't, you I'm, fall for the fake on Michigan ninety five percent of the time, you're a hater because you didn't buy it the five percent of the time. Well, you knew it was absolutely crap. So, That's why you think I hate Michigan because every time I don't buy Michigan stuff. Every time. <laughs> I don't either. Me and Anson got to a lot of conversations about Michigan, Michigan State. But one thing he'll give me is I'm not biased about Michigan. I will call them out if I see something to be called out. That's fair. I'm, 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 That's yeah, fair. I, yeah. I'm, I'm a real fan, but I'm also a real person first. I think I was a person before I was a Michigan alum. You're so. realistically devoted. I appreciate that. 100%. Here's, here's how much I, I hate Michigan. I had lunch with the Michigan Mafia. Is these guys that I gave Who's the Michigan nickname Mafia? to because oh. these dudes that know everything is going oh, on. They know the bodies are buried. And we went to lunch, and they were trying to convince Celine to go to Michigan. That's how much I hate Michigan because I took her to lunch to meet with the mob for them to talk to her to go into Michigan. Listen, there's one thing to hate the institution. There's another thing to understand what comes with being an alum from University of Michigan. And you ain't no fool. That's right. All kinds no. of underhanded dealing. But, but we you know, know it. what? I get why he's brainwashed. There you go. <laughs> I get it. Because I've walked that campus and I've seen the vibe and I said, oh, you know what? One day I was there. There was a nice sunny afternoon mm. and I said, you know what? Oh, I, I kind of get it. I, I get why these people walk around 
like stepper wives. Like, yes, I sir. love Michigan. Oh, go blue, Ooh, blue, blue. <laughs> I, I get it. You, I lo- there's listen, that listen, vibe listen, on that campus. Listen. I love Michigan because I love power and I love to see power. When I see Michigan everywhere in the world, when I know that Michigan has the number one school as it relates to billionaires from, that isn't an Ivy League school, when you go anywhere in this country, Michigan will be represented. That's why I fell in love with Michigan. I want to be the best and I'm one of the leaders and the best. I submit this message. All right. Well, when you uh, <laughs> see that black and yellow sign out in front of your house, and tell son the bad son. guys one you thing. Son of a son. What's the <laughs> tell them, what, What's the Stay sign? Out. Stay out. That's Stay right. Out. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a brand new year. Let Guardian Alarm offer you customized solutions from real experts, 24-7 professional monitoring, and technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology Shut that's been proven to work and by people who are proven to care. <laughs> Call 1-800. Stay out. That's 1-800. Call them today and tell them Woodward Sports sent you. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lessstanford.com today. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit, but we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. Well, it is time for Big Boy and Seafood Fest is back. You can catch it while you can. Dive into fish and chips, their new Parmesan crusted cod, perfectly fried clam strip platter, and a delicious fish sandwich. A Big Boy must try the new mango iced tea, the ultimate compliment to their popcorn shrimp, shrimp Alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Every day is a fish fry at Big Boy. And don't forget, every Friday night, the all you can eat seafood buffet and then after you go to big boy you're gonna want to play some jack labrador r.i.p to right. the same old lions and big thick big thanks to sheila brad and dan for putting them to rest and guess what else has found the grave the same old rock paper scissors jack labrador has revolutionized that tired game with two new symbols and a franchise changing three-point play discover the action at jack now and find out why once you go jack you never go back and now back to armani and edwards with mads I love that saying, once you go Jack, you never go back. Um, wouldn't be a full sports show if we didn't get the other two majors in here. Uh, Tigers 9-7 and seven on the spring. They played the Astros today. Opening day against the Sox, March 28th. That's around the corner. But home opener, April 5th. Anson, 
I'm a huge opening day guy, man. What's the, what's the most fun thing on opening day as we get closer? And also, as I'm wearing the Tigers today, you see it. The Home Opener Festival, baby. Man, it's so much fun. 3,000 people. We're actually doing it. We'll be downtown. We take over a whole city block. Whether you're going to the game or not, you come see us beforehand or after or just hang out all day. Honestly, if, you, if you're not from a major baseball city and you don't understand what opening day means to places like Chicago, New York, Boston, and Detroit, you're missing out. Because I always say that Movement Festival, Tech Fest, is the best time where we can display our city. But 100%. opening day is right there along with it. Everybody's in a great mood. Hopefully we'll get some more, some more good weather. But um, I think the Tigers got They're a little exciting this year. Tarek Skubal is... Um, Tariq Skubal's really looking like one of the, the class pitchers in the in MLB he right is. now. I agree. So it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, but I'll I'll certainly be down there. Can't wait to see Colton Keith as yeah, well I, as I Casey. I don't even Meyer. go to the game. One opening day, I ended up in Canada. Canada. Uh, oh, hey. yeah. That means that that was a date. That was no no. no I ended up <laughs> yeah. it ended up being a date, but yeah, I didn't I didn't know my date. Uh, the day I woke up that day. That that's opening day, baby. <laughs> opening day is a fun time, but, man. Uh, I ended up at somehow after the game. I have a girlfriend. Up at Pizza I can't Populous. do those type of things. And there was a cutie pie, and she's like, oh, "This is an expensive date." I didn't pay for her pizza. Uh, she paid. Okay, I see you, big player. I <laughs> see you, player. Pizza Populous. <laughs> I never knew Pizza Populous was that expensive when I was a kid until I got in high school. You start, you know, going out on lunch because I went to King High School right down the street. I got the pizza poppers. I'm like, yeah, you know, I got like 20 bucks. What? I know. $20 to get you. Wings are plus $20 with tax. Right. right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm excited. <laughs> they that $20 quick. But anyway, you know, we just started talking and stuff. And she said, you know, would you like to come home with me? I'm like, sure. Oh. And then she said, uh, that I should have been uh, a little bit more alert. She said, well, do you have a passport? So I'm like, <laughs> what? Why do I need a passport to go to the house? What, what year like, is this? I don't want to say. Okay. You it didn't need a, a passport back a, then, yeah. Well, no, you didn't, but she wanted me to have a passport. All right. so she wanted you to be traveling. Canada. She in Canada, right? She's in Canada. Yeah. Not Windsor, but LaSalle. Oh, she's about She to. said, no, don't, don't. If you say you went to Canada, don't say you went to Windsor. You weren't in Windsor. You were in LaSalle. That's like hour, an hour and 30 away? No, it's, it connects to Windsor. It's oh, it connects. south. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, you know, you know, so tunnel you know ways. Else, you know, you know, to discover about over over there. What'd you learn about Windsor and LaSalle? Excuse me, LaSalle. Essex County has a wine country. This is true. Yeah, and I I went to it, had a good time. Oh, you get to experience some things. She must yeah. like you a little bit. Mm-hmm. See, that boy, the old, tough part, old players though, got moves. Getting back to the United States three in the morning, a little bit plastered. Yeah, I, I don't know how you pulled that one off because they don't play that, especially now. They. No, you have a, I, if you have a DUI, I got, I got, I got a huge break. Okay, I'm, I'm like driving up. Like I'm, I'm sure my eyes are nice and <laughs> glossy <laughs> and open and smell like sex and stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> sex and cigarettes. The dude, yeah, the dude was like, uh, "Hey, what do you? How do you think the Lions are gonna do this year?" And I'm like, "I'm gonna suck." And so we talked about the Lions. He said, "Go ahead, boom." There you go. They used he the, knew you were from Detroit. <laughs> no, he, he knew he knew who I was and okay. that I ragged on the Lions a lot. Terry got some love out there. You you big time and he, he, so you're not just national. That's international. So you're international out here. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, well, player. Yeah, but they were in Detroit, so it's not that international. Hey, look, man, you go to, yeah. between countries. It's international. Don't take yourself lightly. <laughs> uh, the other team in Detroit, Detroit Red Wings. Everybody was excited about the Red Wings. The whole and you, you, it's you. You're the jinx. You had <laughs> well, Evander Kane had two game winners. He beat Chicago Blackhawks. Everything was great. <laughs> you start talking about them, Terry. You was like everybody getting hyped. This, this they gonna let you off. And then they get the doggone waste management patch, and they have lost five <laughs> games in a row since putting the patch on. Like they actually even lost the playoff spot to the uh, Isles now. Right. They've been bumped. What's going on with the squad? Well, Dylan Larkin is out. This is true. The so, captain. But it ain't like he's Connor McDavid. No, he's not. But, I mean, he's better than people give him credit for. By the way, for. he went to Michigan. Go Blue. <clears throat> he's better than people give him credit for. He is. But he so ain't I Connor McDavid. Like, they just completely falling apart. Yeah. And, plus, and they play good teams, too. The division is a problem, yeah. Colorado, 
the Avalanche are good. Yeah, Florida, they won two years good. ago. They should have won last year, two years ago. Yeah, this is true. But dang, five in a row, like they're getting whooped out there. No, but it, it puts Steve Eisman in a weird position. I'm sure, you know, the trade deadline came where he said, okay, we've lost a couple, but we're still in good shape. Now I'm wondering what he's thinking now. He didn't make any moves. I played myself. He, he decided. <laughs> yeah, he, he played himself. But I think he's, he had to come up with some line. Well, you know, the guys we got on the farm system is just as good as uh, guys we could have traded for or whatever. Just, In the 90s, not now. I don't buy that. But So no ice soccer playoffs in Detroit this year? <laughs> no, no, they they they're, I, they're going ah, they're going to the playoffs. I'm saying it today. They're yeah, out of, okay. They're out of the spot. I'm saying right here. If you want to call me a jinx, go right ahead. They're making the playoffs. Fair Look, enough. I don't know what to think because I told you I listened to you. Uh, I didn't listen to you, and you were right. Now I don't want to listen to you. I don't want you to be right. I'm, I'm still gonna be right. Uh, this is true. If, if you're if you're right, you're gonna be right. Does it make sense? Right. And if I'm wrong, you're gonna be wrong. I'm gonna be wrong. That's the way it goes. I want them to make the playoffs. I think they had a really good shot. I still think they do. But losing Dylan Larkin, like you said, it, it's been a lot bigger than I think the team would have thought. I think even fans, like I thought they were in a good place and they had depth. I think that's really the reason the Wings were winning. It's because they have four, they have four or five lines. Like they got, if they want to say twelve players, that have ten or more goals and over thirty points. So that depth is why I thought that they would be okay. But hey, look, man, they lost to the Phoenix Coyotes on Friday. Excuse me. The Arizona Coyotes, they changed their name. Coyotes stink. They don't even have their own arena. Mm-hmm. I and think, there were more Wings fans than there were. Uh, well, it Ky- didn't matter because Coyotes won. That, I think, is the eye-opening experience for me. Uh, this is fun, T. All right, they're gonna, are they going to make the playoffs? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Real, I'm, I'm going to stick with it. I also said the Tigers are going to win the division this year, too. So, I mean, you know, I, I'm just oh, believing, in my, I'm believing in my squads right now. The Lions make you a believer. I think the Lions have made you a believer. I think said nobody ever until you, this year. Yeah, you know, the Lions it's the truth. have nothing to do with the Tigers. Yeah, they do know. because how did they get there? They got there by coaching and front office and managerialship. That's what I think you're seeing with the Tigers, with Scott Harris, who's come over from the Cubs as well as the Giants. And then I think for the Red Wings, the Eyes are playing. He's been in there four years. The first two years is cleaning up. You saw a significant improvement every year. So, yes, I'm trusting that plan too because of coach. Managerialship and owner makes sense. I think they yeah, both need I, another I, year. Maybe I'm right. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Is Javi Baez still in the lineup? And with that, we end the show. We appreciate <laughs> you guys for tuning in. T Foss, always a pleasure. And so my guys, good to go a little back and forth, Michigan, Michigan State. But you see what Paul Bunyan is, Mike, hell of a job by you. P. Yo. Always clutch, man. Love uh, you, brother. Love you, bro. We'll see you You're guys tomorrow. Hey. Peace. Peace. Uh. Yeah, I just... Uh...